Hey there guys, as part of our look at this in-depth daily event 466 we're going to take a look at a bit of a daily event oddity. We did have one match here that ended up in a 2-2, two and two. so we're going to take a look and see just what happened. Going into round 3, both Hope Fails and X Shockwave X were 1-1. One one. Shockwave took both of his earlier rounds to 3 games, winning 2-1 and one against Model Blue Control, and then losing 1-2 and two to Storm. Hope Vales had won 2-0 oh in round 2 against Mono White Aggro, but had already found himself on the losing end of a Delver matchup in round 1 where he went 0-2. Oh so just how did these two players find themselves on the end of a 2-2 two two score? Well that means that one game was tied, and this is the first game right here. Now again, Hope Vales is playing the Mono Black Control, and X Shockwave X is going to be playing Delver. Kind of an interesting combination here, uh, Hope Vales is running the main deck Witches, Something that is oftentimes reserved for the sideboard, but in recent plays it has managed to creep its way into the main deck of most mono black control lists. Shockwave is actually running an interesting version of Delver as well, uh, bringing in the Sage of Epitier, which is not something you usually find. Now you do miss out on an early turn 1 Delver here, but those double cloud of fairies would have been a fantastic play if it were not for that Echoing Decay which clears them off the board. Hope fails, try to get some draw going, but does meet a daze, and his attempt to unearth is going to get counterspelled, but the second one is going to finally get through. Now, Spire Golem coming in on turn 4, not quite the ideal play, it is much better played when it is turn 3, that is your optimal time for the Spire Golem, but he does get slowed down, you notice he is now here. Stop this quick for a second. We are at turn 5, he does have one card in hand, and it is whatever he was forced to draw off the rats. He is getting a little bit slowed down on this play. Mono Black Control is decent against Delver in most matchups. Um, it is going to control the board pretty well because of those uh, the creature kill spells, and it is able to kind of draw out the hand as well. You see he's forced there to cycle Cloud of Fairies in order to try and draw into something. Luckily for him, he does hit a ninja, so when that Spire Golem is attacking through, he's going to get a draw. Hope Vales makes the correct play there in trying to get rid of that ninja as soon as possible. When your opponent is a low hand like this, he's now up to 2, but he was at a low hand. It is important to try and get those off the board as soon as possible and try and slow down whatever draw you can. Not going to have a lot of answers as far as the flying goes. It did appear that Hope Vales was not running things like Luliana's uh, Spectre. To be able to deal with those, he'll have to find some hard kill for it. So an attempt to shut that down with a dead weight is going to be cancelled out there as it gets counterspelled, and he uses a witch to kill off that Sage Vepeteer. Second Spire Golem coming down, going to make this a little bit more tricky. Drawing into finding some answer, you see Hope Fails here also is at a point in time where he was unable to get the draw he needed, and is unable to really attack through on that 4 toughness of the Spire Golems. Crypt Rat does come down, and this is going to be the key here because that is going to be how this game gets tied. Uh, witches are going to attack through, he's going to do his best to lower out his opponent, but that one Spire Golem left to block is going to do a decent job of keeping creature, creatures off the board and some damage off the table. Bit of a mana flood coming in for Hope Vales, but it's a, something you typically see about this point in the game, we're about 12 turns in. Um, also you see X Shockwave X as well is getting a little bit heavier on the mana, something that is really not necessary at this point in time. And you see here at 2 life, we're going to stop real quick, 2 life here, Hope Fails is going to activate the ability on Crypt Rats for 6, and this is going to end up tying the game because it's going to finish off both opponents, si um, both players, sorry, simultaneously as it uh, activates and kills them off for 6, leaving them at minus uh, 4 and 0. And this is going to take it into 4 games, um, hopefully 4 games, and it doesn't come to that again. Second game here is going to start off right away, and both players have had a chance to sideboard at this point in time. For those of you who are not familiar with that situation, it does um, jump to the next match after sideboarding, um, and both players will start over, and it's basically going into it as a 0-0 record. Fast start off Sage of Epitier, I guess, however, you would prefer that to be a Delver in most cases. Again, Delver into Cloud of Fairies on turn 2 is your optimal play as Mono Blue Control um, and Delver. Funeral Charms are going to be a great option here for killing off some of these little 1-1 one -one creatures. Fairly decent matchup. If you actually look at Popper's Cage, I was surprised to see they consider this only slightly favorable for Delver Blue. I would consider this to be um, slightly favorable to Mono Black Control, but they've run the numbers, so we'll take their word for it. Um, it came in at only 55% favorable. 
So now he's going to be able to get that Spire Golem down. Still turn four, but he is at that three mana sweet spot, which gets that in. But the snuff outs, which were probably brought in off the sideboard, are going to be able to take care of that. And then the witches are going to be quickly addressed with a daze. Good play there by Shockwave, because you really want those witches to be off the board. He's going to do his best to try and control those down, especially when he's running so many of these one toughness creatures. Snaps it back to his opponent's hand going to continue to attack through off of these Sage Epiteers, and it's going to be very slow damage, but it is damage nonetheless. Which is coming in once again, and they finally do land on the table, and Geth's Verdict will able, enable him to get one of those Sages off the table as well. Things are going to be looking up a little bit here, as those Witches can sit here and start picking off the Sprites and the age, uh, Sage of Epitear clears off the board here and he is at five life but in a pretty favorable position his opponent is down to two cards in hand and not making a play which means that they might be lands it's a pretty safe assumption at this point in time when he's able to get that rager down i would think that the mono um, the delver can player sorry would want to be able to keep that uh, rager off the field and slow down some of the draw dead weight is going to finish off that ninja and it definitely is putting hope fails in the position to make a comeback in this game More Rager comes down, more draw, and the rats are going to slow down Shockwave as well. Like I said, the draw is favorable. It is getting Hope Veils down pretty low, but it is still something that is going to be in his favor. And it is going to take the second game. We're going to jump into the third one here real quick. So going into the third game, we now have Hope Veils is up basically 1 and 0. X Shockwave X gets down that first turn, Sage Repetir once again. going to be a bit of a slow going here but he does manage to get in that second turn ninja which is fantastic also gives him a great replayability on that sage of epitier daze is going to come down protecting that ninja from a dead weight and this replay of the sage is a really great thing um, if you get that turn one delver it is definitely the faster play but if you can still use that ninja to return something is uh, the sage of epitier gives you that come into play enters the battlefield effect once again um, also gets down that Phantasmal Bear, which will give him another fast start. And you see he's already up really 20 to 9. Hope Fails is not getting the cards he needs in order to keep these guys off the board. Trying to draw into something by cycling Baron Moore and Phyrexian Rager coming into play. Snap is going to return it, and it gives him another opportunity to draw cards, but a pretty good play here by Shockwave because of the fact that Hope Fails is at such low life and has to now consider whether or not he wants to take that life in order to get this going. Second Ninja does come down, puts Hope Fails down to one life, and now he is unable to play that Rager, and it looks like Shockwave is going to be able to take this game. So Tendril actually going to get him back into this, and you see this slow this right here for a second. He manages to Tendrils off one of the Ninjas, and then is able to play the Spinning Darkness from his hand, because he removed those three cards from his graveyard and exiled them from the game. And that's going to enable him to gain six life off those two. Would have been a little bit more if he was able to get some extra basics in, but these non-basics off the cycling lands are going to slow it down a little bit. Things are still looking pretty good in X Shockwave's favor because of the fact that he does get those two more golems and drops a whole handful of creatures. Empty hand now, not so terrible even though the Echoing Decay is going to take out some Delvers. Still in a pretty good position here. Risky Gamble here takes the Rager to draw a card hoping to find something and doesn't. Unfortunately being at two life and having no answers he's going to find himself on the raw end of this stick. So this makes us once again back to 1-1. One one. This game is all tied up with a tie in the first game. Second and third games, we each split. So now we come to this fourth game, and this is something you have to look out for. The first and foremost in this fourth game is the timer on the clock. And they're starting out here. You have X Shockwave X with only 7 minutes and 30 seconds basically on his clock. And 12 minutes for Hope Fails. This puts him in a pretty good position because of the fact that an um, inconsistent Delver player may be a little bit slower in deciding on his counterspell moves. Another first turn Sage, a lot of great draws here for Shockwave on those early turn games. Um, Hope Fails is going to take some life to draw a few cards as well. Funeral Charm coming down, trying to get off these Cloud of Fairies, but the Spell Stutter Sprite will prevent that from happening. And a Guest Verdict is going to give now uh, Shockwave an option to kill, and he does decide to daze it. And that does build up his graveyard there to get these three cards, so he is able to Spinning Darkness off the Fairies. Phantasmal Bear comes down, it's going to give him a much more aggressive start off of these 1-1 uh, Fairies and 1-1 Sage of Epitir. Not quite the start that you want, it's very slow damage, but the Bears do kind of make up for it. 
dead weight is going to kill off that bear and the triggered ability and sh the spire golem is going to come down once again snuff out hits that off the board real fast nice draw there by hope fails continuing to swing still at an advantage here with second spire golem coming down however it is going to meet a second snuff out definitely unfortunate and he's going to keep it pretty hope fails is going to keep it pretty close because of the fact that he's tapping out and X Shockwave X is going to take the same chance to tap out all his 1-1s. He's 4 life ahead, however, he is without cards in hand, and that is not a position you want to be in with Delver Blue. Most have really good options as far as drawing cards, and he has not gotten into many of them. Preordain is giving him one card. It's going to give him a bear that can hopefully balance things out a little bit. Hope Bales is risking a lot of life to go down and draw cards, but that's just kind of a sign of an experienced player being a little bit more willing to take that life in order to draw into what he needs. I think he knows at this point in time that because his opponent is down to so few cards in hand, it is going to put him at a slight advantage here. He's only taking one damage every turn, and in exchange he's being able to attack for four. Uh, he knows that no cards in his opponent's hands means that it's not going to be able to counterspell many of his options. Uh, Shockwave keeps himself in pretty well here, does manage to top deck in a ninja, but it looks like Hope Fails kept a kill spell around just for that. Still one card in hand now for Hope Fails. Puts him also in a pretty bad position. Usually you like to have as many cards as possible, and Mono Black Control is actually pretty good at drawing, but keeping that can kill spell for the ninja was a great play. Double place uh, sprites in order to block out one of the ragers, trying to keep himself alive, but now being down to, down to two life, it is going to switch things up too well and he is not going to be able to do much. Kill Spell on Delver is going to take away his only chump blocker and end this game. So this 2-2 two two match ended up actually being a win for Hope Fails. Like I said, something you do not see often, but because we do have that Crypt Rats, we actually had that great opportunity for a tie game there. So with that devastating loss in round 3, X Shockwave X would be forced to drop from the tournament with a 1-2 record. Hope Fails would move on to round 4 where he would face yet another mono blue control deck. This time winning 2-1, he would end up with an overall record of 3-1. Makes him 17th place overall in this daily event. Um, congratulations goes out to Hope Fails for a great performance here. Just shows that sometimes you need to take that opportunity to tie out a game if you really feel you'll give yourself a better advantage perhaps after sideboarding and move on from there. So hope you guys enjoyed this. We may do this more. Let me know what you think.